Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. Before you go out there and cheat on someone you claim to love, hurt someone's feelings, deceive or talk bad about someone, remember karma. Today in our space, we learn that what goes around comes back around. Our first OP's ex could never cheat karma. Two weeks since D-Day, hoping it gets better and easier. We were together for two years, and for the last seven or eight months of our relationship, I had my strong suspicions. She wasn't coming home after nights out on the weekend. She's either come home at 4 or 5 a.m. or not at all. Would come in the next morning with crappy stories of passing out drunk in parking lots or locking herself out of the car, coming home at 9 and 10 in the morning. She would come home smelling like dude's B.O., just really thin lies. Her money started disappearing and she began acting very secretive and began beating me down on my appearance, on my hobbies. She even said I used too many big words to talk to. <laughs> I just made myself believe the lies, told myself that she wasn't doing the things I was thinking. But one morning about a month ago, she woke up at 8, went to the bathroom, took a phone call then, had to leave to go pick up her friend. I'm not a nosy boyfriend and super trusting, obviously, but I had a feeling. When she left, I checked her Apple Watch, and there it all was, messages and snaps between her and like four different dudes. I called and confronted her. She admitted she was at a breakfast with one. I packed up my crap, moved out, and came to Florida to be with my family. While I was down here, she came clean, said she just entertained conversations, nothing physical. Of course she blamed me, said I spent too much time on the Xbox, didn't make her feel loved, etc. We talked all week. She swore she would be better. She even drove all the way to Florida and literally begged me to come back. So I did. Shake my head. We were supposed to have rules about location and answering FaceTime. She was supposed to block that guy's number and delete her snap. Things she offered. I didn't ask. While we were back, she was just acting so strange. Still hiding it. Started treating me crappy. Then she had this big idea. Let's move to Florida together and give ourselves a clean start. So I drained my bank account, fixed up her car, four new tires, oil change, etc. We packed up all of our stuff and moved. The night before we moved, she went out to Louisville for one last girl's night. I stayed home three hours away because she didn't want me to go. I never heard from her all that night. She came back at 9 a.m. the next morning, smelling like a dude again. I didn't want to start a fight. We got in the car and drove down here. On the drive down here, I caught her using Snapchat. I confronted her. She came clean about this conversation partner she had. She also came clean about 12 other guys she was napping, sending explicit videos. She even admitted she screwed only one person and didn't want to tell me as she was afraid I wouldn't come back. I forgave her. We were about two hours from my parents' house, and I forgave her all of that. Not ideal, but I mean, we can communicate. I'll forgive, and we will move on. Well, every day that we were down here, I would discover something new, and that one person in the span of two weeks snowballed into this, I mean, basically porno that she was having with like literally 10 other 22, 23 year dudes at the college we met at. I mean, she is sending them $20, $30 to buy weed, buying them tail lights, tires, food, etc. Basically an entire second life. All while I was paying all the bills, keeping her hair up, keeping her nails up. I would buy her hotels in Louisville and Atlanta for these weekend getaways, and she was cheating on me the entire time. I found like a dozen different ridiculous videos of her with these guys in her Facebook Messenger of her screwing and sucking these guys, videos that she sent of herself on Snapchat and etc. The real kicker is she always said our anniversary was 2-7-2020. I found one of the relationships had been carried on since March of 2020. I mean, a week ago we were planning a cruise for a birthday this summer. I was debating on maybe proposing, like she was carrying on all of this crazy crap but then she and I were thinking about trying for a baby at the end of the year, and she was looking at fertility doctors. Then, to beat it all, she hits me with the all-time classic. Well, I love you as a person, but I've not been in love for a while. Meanwhile, she's begging these guys to fall in love with her and not just use her for sex. And that's an actual quote from a text she sent one of them yesterday. <laughs> to which he replied asking for $30, and she sent it. Like you are begging these guys to not use you for sex and money, but meanwhile, I'm literally stressing myself to death, trying to make sure you are happy because of a conversation you said happened because you got bored because I played on my headset too much. Update. X continues to post about me. I posted my story here about three or four months ago. 
Basically since the last D-Day, I have stuck to my no contact. She has created new Snapchat and email accounts reaching out to me, calls from blocked numbers. I never responded or acknowledged any of these attempts. They stopped at the beginning of June after she posted a couple's photo with her new BD and one of her many affair partners. I don't have her on Facebook, but have mutual friends who told me. All was quiet up until yesterday when she again emailed me from another new email account stating that she was still waiting for me to be civil and talk to her for closure. My friend has respected my wish of not informing me on anything she says posts about me. However, I asked her yesterday if anything had been said since she recently renewed her communication efforts. She told me that my ex for the last two months has alternated between making posts bashing me, claiming victim of abuse and cheating and etc., as well as making posts about how good life is and the newfound relationship that allows her to go clubbing and etc. For the record, I was never controlling or anything. My question rant is that each day I convince myself that I don't care about the lies and slander she posts about, even though I never knew for sure, just suspected. Now that it's confirmed, I am more bothered by it than I thought. Any insight on why they do this? Is it not enough she got to hurt and lie to me, she gets to go enjoy this new relationship, travels and clubs and etc., but must also try to make it out to seem as though I'm a monster playing victim? Now more than ever, it's difficult to not reach out and confront her, even though I know that's exactly what she wants. Will she ever get bored or more on which will allow me to move on? Update. Just want to say thank you to all who shared their support and stories. It's definitely what I needed to help my resolve on this no contact stance. It really helps to remind myself that I'm not at all alone or unique in going through this experience and that there is light on the other side. Time for some community reactions. First up, what life won. It sounds like that is exactly what she wants, for you to reach out to her. Please don't, especially since she is publicly bashing you. If you contacted her, it's a win. If you're nice to her, then in her mind, what she did just isn't so bad. How could it be if you're being nice to her? Giving her closure or whatever that means lets her off the hook. She's no longer the bad guy. If you contact her and you are angry, it's a win for her. See how mean and abusive he is? Plays right into her narrative. Then she is the sympathetic victim. Ignore her, at least as best you can. Ask friends to just not tell you. It's not worth it. Next up, Night's End 2 says, Your ex is trying to manipulate you and the rest of the world. She has run out of viable ways to control the situation. If manipulative narcissist a-holes can't handle one thing, it is being entirely irrelevant to someone they once had their hooks in. Congrats, this is 50% of the reason why you go no contact when cheated on. You can't really be a winner in such a crap show, but in their eyes, you are now the winner and they are the loser. Next comment from Puzzleheaded Web 292 In the famous words of Admiral Akbar, It's a trap. Dr. Pretorius chimes in next. Your ex sounds like a covert narcissist. One of my ex friends was exactly that. We were never involved romantically, but we were business partners, and anytime anyone called her out on her nonsense, she would take to social media to try to convince the world she was right and the other person was wrong. How do you deal with someone like that? You don't. You leave them in the dust. Don't allow the cheater to guilt you into thinking that you had it coming, OP. In fact, it should be the cheater who should be showing remorse and not the other way around. Gaslighting is a form of psychological abuse where one partner persistently denies the reality of the other partner via consistently lying, bullying, and obfuscating the facts causing that person, over time, to doubt her, or his, perception of truth, facts, and reality. Basically, the cheater wants the betrayed partner to question her, or his, perception of reality, and to accept blame for any problems. Your ex just didn't want to take any responsibility for her actions, OP. You did nothing at all wrong. Tell us your thoughts in the comments below. Next up, nothing loses this OP's interest quite like a liar. How do I screen out cheaters when dating? Please comment on your experience or your thoughts on how to evaluate a person's character to determine if they are faithful. One strategy I'm considering. If the dating partner asks why I got divorced, tell them the truth but downplay the pain it caused. Be a lot more understanding of the point of view of the wayward spouse. Now that you come off as a really forgiving, level-headed person, you can ask if they have ever cheated on their previous partner. They still might not tell you the truth, but how they respond to your story might tell you a lot about their character. Ask for help, you're gonna get it. Angry Baby Mama says, There's clearly no way. No one wants to be cheated on, and people get cheated on every day. There's no tag on these people to notify the rest of us to be cautious of them. I dated my ex for three years. When we met, 
I was fresh out of a relationship where I was treated terribly. He was there for me as a friend for six whole months. He would listen to me cry and console me with how tough things were. Eventually, we dated. I had so much respect for him for being there for me in a time I needed someone. Tell me why this man also ended up doing terrible things to me, including having a baby not by me during the course of our relationship. <laughs> I cannot make these things up. People can trick the heck out of you. Livin Carpenter adds, I usually ask about past relationships and what they did to learn about themselves and how did they grow from that past relationship. People can give their opinion about another person, but I want to know, did you learn and grow yourself or are you still the same person? Clean the effing slate says, This is a fantastic response. People who chronically lie and cheat don't seem to have much capacity for the kind of self-reflection that fosters personal growth. Asking specifically what they learned and how they grew from it can give us a decent glimpse into the kind of person they are. If they provide a general reply such as, I learned a lot and it helped me to become a better person, without any specifics, that reveals they aren't interested in having the kind of conversations that foster honest, healthy relationships. It also could indicate that they will tend to gloss over things that you feel are important and aren't forthcoming about their truth. It's also a huge red flag if their answers are centered around bashing their ex. Example, I learned that some people are just crazy, or now I know to avoid women with daddy issues. These kinds of responses show they can't take responsibility for their role in relationships and place blame on other people. Another bit of advice from Asrio Nam, people with overlapping relationships. To which the OP replies, I think this comment is a winner at least from my experience. Even if someone has not cheated physically with someone if they jump from one relationship to another, it means they were already investing time and energy into someone else. Next comment from X Nihilo Zero. If they treat other people with disrespect, try to scam discounts and considerations at restaurants, play up misfortune online for attention or freebies, etc. Basically any form of dishonesty is red flag in my book. If they lie to other people, they'll lie to you. If they lie about other people, they'll lie about you. If they scam other people, they'll scam you. No matter how well they treat you, if they mistreat other people, they'll eventually mistreat you. Tank Zealous Ideal 1125 has an idea. Cheaters rarely tell they have cheated. You just see it from how honest they are. If they catch them lying about small things, they'll probably lie about big things. Do they stand behind their words and follow them with actions? If they don't, probably shouldn't date them. Bluebirds6183 wanted to get in on the conversation. I'm not going to mention it until I casually ask if they have cheated. Zero tolerance policy no matter what the explanation. Your plan is good too. The OP responds, I doubt they will admit it. They probably already performed some mental gymnastics to justify their actions. They might not even consider it cheating. Example, I was planning on breaking up with him anyway, or she wasn't having sex with me so I had to get it somewhere else, etc. I think with dating, it's a lot more important to focus on you than it is to focus on someone else's behavior or character. If you love and respect yourself, it's easy to weed out inauthentic people. I would say, the more you show yourself love and respect, the more you'll attract people who do. Boundaries are also super important. I wouldn't give people more chances than they deserve. One should earn your trust. I think it's easy to weed out the liars and the cheaters by asking them questions about themselves. Emotional maturity and self-awareness are big ones to look out for. What's some of the ways you weed out the liars and cheaters? Let us know in the comments. Meanwhile, we're gonna move on, where actions speak louder than words for our last OP. What is the dumbest thing your cheating partner said when you confronted them? I'll start. You'd do it too if a pretty girl stuck her tits in your face. Lukewarm Tauntaun 4 says, I cheated because our marriage was bad. Our marriage was bad for both of us, but I did not cheat. That's because women don't cheat. Um, didn't you cheat on me with married women? It was in this moment he realized that he could no longer use testosterone as an excuse for cheating. Next one from She Loved Lily's 918. We wouldn't even be arguing right now if you weren't all in my business. Velociraptor0796 has one. When I caught him asking a girl for nudes, he claimed it was only to boost her self-esteem. Like, bruh, what about mine? Confundus Charmed adds, It's not what it looks like. And here I was thinking they were practicing wrestling and not having sex in my bed. Tall, blonde, and cute adds one. My ex sent a picture of her lips saying, See, 
didn't look like they gave someone a blowjob. I heard you do it. You butt dialed me. That's why after he finished, I heard you talking to him how great it was. Next one from Wing Suspicious 1203. It didn't mean anything. So you destroyed a relationship for someone that didn't mean anything. How comforting. Zuga Booga chimes in. My ex-wife said, I never wanted to leave you. She also said, I was very clear with both guys I was cheating with that I was married. Both of these blow my mind. Manson Girl wants to say, My, now ex, husband tried to gaslight me in real time. It was after I'd got the feeling, you know the one, and I just knew something was going on behind my back. I'd never had a reason to distrust him until that moment, but it turns out my gut was correct. He'd come in drunk and passed out on the couch, so I went through his phone. I found texts, and it was obvious that he'd been out with the affair partner that night. Looking back, I wish I'd handled it differently, but it is what it is. So I woke him up, hysterical, with his phone in my hand, and messages opened, demanding for him to explain the texts. He took the phone off me, deleted the messages right in front of me, looked me dead in the eyes, and without missing a beat, he said, What texts? No one important, just me, has a thought. Mine was caught with prostitutes and justified it with, Well, you spent money on subscription boxes. Roxitten has one. There are so many to choose from. You knew this would be the result. Yes, but the reality of it is so much worse. Cheeky little vixen says, He said he didn't tell me because, I never asked. Because you ask your husband daily if he's had an affair? Halo 2 Fire chimes in. I know I cheated on you, but I can't deal with you not trusting me anymore. Confronting a cheater is never easy, but bringing things into the open will give you peace of mind. It's hard to admit that someone who cheats is an important part of your life, and that you have become aware of the cheating. To face that person and say what you know or suspect can take a toll on the most courageous person and possibly destroy relationships. On the other hand, failing to speak up when you have evidence to suggest that someone you care about is cheating behind your back will leave you feeling miserable and suspicious. It's better to bring out the issues face to face and deal with them once and for all. The majority of cheating spouses will deny, deny, deny infidelity until they are blue in the face. Some cheaters will deny an affair even if you present them with hard evidence. Why? They will deny because even if you thought they were your best friend, the one person that would never lie to you this way, the fact is you will probably catch them unprepared. They don't have their story straight yet. They haven't decided whether they want to admit cheating, how to tell you about it, how much to reveal, and in case of a long-term affair. Admitting usually means they will have to end the affair, which is also something they may not have decided about yet. Words have weight on them, but it's actions that show us the true colors of a man. Thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. Also, please let us know what you thought of today's content. Until next time.